This is a painting I made in 2017. Well, this is what I'm working on right now. So how can you make sure that your paintings end up closer to the second one rather than the first one? In today's video, I'm here to tell you six ways on how to know if you're doing a good job. Hey all, welcome back, I'm Ariabba. For those who don't know me, I draw cute stuff and I teach what I know about art here on the channel. So, values. First of all, I already made a tutorial on the subject, so if you haven't watched that one, I really recommend to watch that first. Link is up above. Mastering values is one of the most important things to master as an artist, because value is what makes us perceive masses and it's how light interacts with the surface and all that jazz. Some people may think it's boring and may want to skip this passage, but really, it's the base of any good painting. Now, with all this said and done, let's cut to the chase. How do you check if your values are actually correct? Now, if you already started your painting, no need to panic, no need to disrupt all your work. I'm gonna show you six ways on how to test very quickly if your painting is working. Number one, let's just break it into two values. Instead of making your life miserable and try to master a ton of values at once, start by just break it in two values. If you are starting a painting, you can just start with these two values. But if you already have a painting done, you can just use this as a method of checking. You can just make a layer on top and paint these two values anyway. This is a great way to see if the silhouettes of what matters in your painting are working properly. And I don't need to tell you how important silhouettes are for composition, right? You don't want to get your viewers lost somewhere in the painting, is it? If you decide to use it as a method for starting your painting, this lets you decide a lot of stuff for your painting early on and it's really really useful and if what you're painting is working then you can decide to um, increase the number of values and go to four then six and and so on this is a good built-up approach that leaves details for last so that we don't get lost in those, which is a mistake that I see a lot of my students make. But even if it's a final check, it tells you a lot about whether you're doing a good job or not. Check out how well this works in my two examples. The first one has values all over the place and I can't read anything properly. To make it readable, I would really have to split it in a different way than what I've done until now. The second one has good silhouettes and I can quite read everything out of them, so no wonder the second one is working better. Number two, check your painting from really far away. One really good way of checking if your painting is working or not is to check if it's 100% readable. And how do we do that? Easy. We just zoom the hell out of it and we make it really, really small. So this is something I learned pretty early on. I think it might have been on Feng Zhu's channel. If you don't know him, folks, do yourself a favor and go check it out because the guy is an absolute art genius. Anyway, this really stuck with me because its efficacy is incredible. It's unbelievable how many things of the overall composition gets lost to your eyes if you look close to the painting, especially after quite some time. By zooming out though, you lose completely track of the details or the nice rendered area you just finished and you're really, really forced to just look at the overall composition. Now we can really see what's working and what's not, what is readable, what the overall mood and values are. At this stage, when we're checking it really, really small, it's working, then we're doing a good job. We have our check done. Check this one. Super small, perfectly readable. While this other one, well, we got some work to do or maybe a lot. Actually, nothing reads. The whole area in the middle is just a blob of nothingness. Number three, check your values while your painting is progressing. There are some cases where we might want to paint in colors directly. It's fine, not every painting has to start with values. Although, if we don't have already a really well-trained eye, sometimes this can really trick us because colors translate into values in very tricky ways. And especially, not all colors translate to value in the same way. And to show you what I mean, let's have a simple look on how the color wheel translates into values. As you can see, none of these colors, even if they have the same 100% point of saturation, translate into the same value. You realize this will give us a lot of confusion if we are painting directly in colors, especially if we don't have a way to check our values. So there's a little trick that we can use in most of the painting softwares, like Procreate, Photoshop, or Krita. They all pretty much work in the same way. We can simply add a layer on top of our painting, fill it with black, and use the layer blending mode called color or the one called saturation. As you can see, this lets us see the painting in a grayscale version. The cool thing about this method is that this is just on a layer, which means I can toggle it on and off to keep my values in check without disrupting my process in any way. I just turn the layer on, check it, 
turn it off and keep painting. I use this all the time. Number four, just remember to take the aerial perspective into account. If you've seen some of my other videos, I know what you're thinking. Mari, you stressed us with this already. I know, I know, folks. But this is really important for the success of the painting, so let's see it again. It's really simple and you can observe it in reality or photos really often. The more distant things are, the more the values flatten because of the presence of atmosphere. This is very evident in this landscape photo. So when you're painting, remember to use the values accordingly to where the things are located related to the position of your imaginary camera. This is something that I check really carefully with all my paintings. And that's how I am able to show depth in them. You can see it clearly in some of my examples here. If we check both of my two examples, you can see that this element is present in both of them. But I managed to make it more visible and better readable in the second one. The problem we have with the first one, together with all the others already seen, is that the contrast is poorly evident between the foreground and the rest. And there is no contrast at all between the middle ground and the background. Number five. What's the mood of your painting? Let's look again at real life. Real life is really complex and there are millions of values around us. Human eyes aren't that complex, so we can perceive only about a thousand values at a time in a really dynamic way, but only that much. What do I mean by dynamic? It's actually pretty cool. Our eyes can basically adapt to what's around us. For example, when we walk into a dark room, at first we're not gonna see much, but after some time, our eyes can actually adapt to the environment and we can start perceiving what's around us. So the about thousand values we can perceive are actually adaptable based on the environment. And painting works pretty much in the same way. With just a small amount of values, we can represent effectively entire scenes. So when you're starting your painting with your scale of values in front of you and you're gonna choose just a few of them, just choose the few important ones. And if your painting is already in a developed state, look at your work and if you haven't already, ask yourself what the mood of your painting, what you're looking for, what kind of atmosphere. I already explained this concept in the first value video, but let's, let's give you a TLDR. Starting from my 10 value scales, just choose the ones convenient for the mood that you want to give. For example, if I have a dark mood of horror and misery, it's likely that I'll choose a set of values that goes towards the darkest tones. On the contrary, in a very heavily or epic scene, we'll go towards light ones. Of course, this is something that we would consider ideally prior to starting our painting. But if you find yourself stuck when you're already developing it, asking yourself these questions can really solve your problem. Sometimes when you just realize this along the way, saving your work is just a matter of adjusting curves and turning all your values towards the overall mood that you wanted to give it in the first place. If you check my two examples here, one is a clear mood, it's a clear sky, it's during the day, the scene is very clear. The other one didn't really nail a mood much, maybe it's something that passed Ari would need to work on. Now, before giving you the last tip, I just want to say that if you really like this content and you want to see more, you can help the channel by supporting me on Patreon. All of the earnings will be reinvested to make free tutorials and content for you folks, but you'll have rewards on the platform too. If you prefer supporting the content in other ways though, just liking the video, leaving me a comment or a feedback below, and subscribing also helps me a ton. Now, back to the topic. Number six is be sure about what you want to obtain. A lot of the times we have a specific specific color palette of type of color palette in mind before even starting the painting. But we want to paint in value first because it simplifies the process and because it's really useful. For example, if I want a pastel mood type of color palette with a very bright scene, how are we going to set up our values in a way that helps you obtaining that result? Well, this can be a bit tricky. As I explained earlier, colors can be a little bit tricky when translating to values and vice versa. It happened to me multiple times, especially at the beginning, that I wanted to translate from values to color in a certain way, but the colors didn't match the values at all. And I couldn't obtain what I had in mind. So what's the solution here? The first tool you need is always knowledge. If you are an experienced artist and you've seen this passage many, many times, then you know what to expect. But if you're a beginner or you haven't really mastered values and colors yet, you might need some extra help. A simple trick to overcome this would be to lay down your palette and check it in values before you start your value painting. This is something really quick to do and with a little effort we can have really good results. You obviously still need to paint your values properly according with all the other rules of painting with values we've seen already, but this will give you a rough idea on where to choose in the 1 to 10 scales of value to obtain the closest results as possible to your final palette. Please remember not to be hasty though. As I explained in my grayscale to color tutorial, the first iteration from value to color 
it's gonna be always ugly. This is because this is still the base of your color painting. And at this stage, there still needs adjustments and paint overs that needs to be made. I won't explain them here because I already explained how to translate your value painting to color. So if you haven't checked that one, link is up above. Now let's go on checking on my two examples here. The first one is in a forest and no, I clearly painted this with values and I didn't imagine how to translate it to colors at all. And it clearly shows. I wasn't even aware of the translation from value to color at the time, so it ended up quite messy. The second one, I had clearly a daylight scene in mind with all the values and colors that come with it. I was better prepared and I imagined the final result when I painted it and I think it shows. And this is all for today, folks. I hope you find it useful, but feel free to ask me questions in the comments if you have any and as always I'll do my best to reply to as many as possible. Also shout out to my Patreon for supporting this content, thank you guys and thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.